What is your name? Terry Martin. Okay. And what are your views of the Site C Dam? Uh, I think it's a complete uh, uh, disaster um, on so many levels. One, it is it, it, it ignores indigenous rights. It's, it's an assault on ind- indigenous people. It takes away really valuable farmland. Um, the government wants, you know, says they spent a couple billion dollars and they want to throw another 10 billion after that for a dam to provide power that nobody wants. They've, they've started out by saying um, we need it for BC and it was proven that we don't. Our, our energy needs have not risen in 10 years. So then they said they wanted to sell it to America. America says they don't want it because they're investing in, in uh, renewable energy, solar and wind, and they're becoming completely self-sufficient, so they won't buy our power. Then they said they wanted to sell it to Alberta. Alberta doesn't want it because they're investing in solar, actually. So now they're saying they want, to, they want it to provide power to the Yukon. And that's for fracking. And, you know, it's just, it's, they're trying to find excuses to build this dam rather than actually have a real reason. So, um, you know, that's sort of the history of it and, and, and the big reasons why we shouldn't have it. We're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it for the rest of your Our life. Our grandchildren are as well. My yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. Um, sorry. In, sorry. In 2015, Christy Clark said, vowed to get it to the point of no return. Right now, do you think Site C is at a point of no return? Absolutely not. You know, any, any person in business knows that if you invest money in something and it's a losing proposition, you don't throw more money at it. You, you cut your losses and walk away. It's that simple. Do you think that in a hundred years, if we do scrap Site C, do you, how long do you think it will take for all the environmental and everything in that area to recover? It depends what we put into it. You know, if we spend a billion or, or, or slightly less than that, it can recover fairly quickly. But um, just it left to its own, it's going to take a very long time. Uh, the problem is, is that is that the massive amount of the valley hasn't yet been destroyed because it hasn't been flooded. Uh, so it's it's completely repairable at this point. And the other part of the, the, the equation is, is that if you wrote off that $2 billion and invested $5 billion in solar and wind, you'd be up to $7 billion and you'd have as much or more power than Site C would provide and you'd provide 10 times as many jobs. So, the whole thing makes no sense. Yeah. So, another question. One, more, one last question. John Horgan said that in his leg, like, when, when he was running, that he was completely against the sight scene. Yeah. But, when he finally got elected, and a couple of months after, he said that... We are doing it with heavily, heavily hearts, but we are continuing the site C. But if it's, but if many people don't think it's at the point of the turn, then what are a few reasons that you think he's continuing? I think he has pressure from some unions for the jobs that it, the short-term jobs it'll create. I think there's pressure from some NDP insiders. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with the financial rationale that they've given because the financial rationale is actually not done by, with proper accounting principles. And even on David Eby's own site, the Attorney General's, he just put out a newsletter that I got yesterday. He even says, yes, I, I admit we're building this dam for power that we have no use for. So the reasons aren't the money. The reasons are, are things they're not saying. Mm-hmm. And they need to speak out and tell the public the truth about why they're doing this. Cannot give us just this lie about the financial uh, rationale that they're giving us. Thank you so much for your time. I, this really helped. It's totally my pleasure.